Let's talk about uh, some of the tax proposals, Ed, that are out there from our new president, Joe Biden, and a few that we want to mention, uh, capital gains uh, taxes, uh, step up in basis, and some changes in estate taxes. Let's start with his proposals on capital gains. Well, uh, they want to raise the capital gain rate. I, I think it's a bit much, but uh, you may remember uh, in in the late 80s, under Reagan, he raised the capital gain rate, and he actually made it equal to the ordinary income tax rate at about 28%, and that only lasted for two or three years. The rates were the same, and everybody was okay with it then. We had a big boom then. <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, so and, and, and the 28% was the top rate under that Tax Reform Act of 1986 as well. Right. They brought the the uh, the ordinary rate down, the capital gain rate up, and that was probably a good uh, a good negotiation and a good place to be. I'm sorry it only lasted a few years. And one of the reasons they did that, it stopped all the shenanigans of people trying to turn ordinary income into capital gain. It was all the same rate. Right. So right. Uh, they're, they're trying to do something like that now, but at too high of a rate, I think. Wouldn't that 39 so percent? Is that what he's proposing? 39 percent? It's more than that, because if you add the 3.8% Medicare, you know, that uh, net Sir tax and income tax, yeah. it's about 43.4%. Then if you add state taxes for people in uh, high tax states like mine in New York, you're way over 50%. I think that's the tipping point. I think once you get over 40%, I mean, people will deal with it, but it's, it's not good. Uh, uh, you know, and again, that was the first salvo. By the time, I know we're recording this, but by the time somebody is watching this, it could be tamped down by then. I don't think it'll pass at that higher rate. I don't think anything, and I don't have any inside information, just my gut, given the 50-50 makeup of the Senate, anything extreme is just not going to pass. I don't think so. I think they have more negotiating to do, and the same way I feel about step up and base. Yeah, see, I think I that's the, that's the can. most extreme, extreme thing that yeah, I've I, seen in a long time. Um, so say, you know how long? How you long? Know how long? <laughs> Two hours. Hundred years. Hundred years. Okay. Step so, up in basis was enacted in 1921, and over those hundred years, every time there was a war, a financial crisis, or Congress needed money, the same arguments came up. Not the similar, not similar to today. The exact same arguments. Oh, let's get it from the rich people. You know, we need money. We have a crisis. And every time it was shot down, because when it got close to putting it into law, and this happened every time, everyone seemed to realize, or Congress found, finally realized, it would fall on all the wrong people, homeowners, business owners, property owners, uh, that have gains that a lot of it is just due to inflation. Look at a farmer or a small business person who want, first of all, it's hard enough to transfer, as you know, a business to the next generation. Most of them fail after the first generation. Then you have the pandemic, which has hurt so many businesses. Now, let's say somebody dies and they want to turn the business over to their children or grandchildren. Where are they going to get the money to pay the tax on the value of that business when all of that money is tied up in property, plant, inventory? There's just no way to get the money out. You'll destroy that business. I think that proposal is dead on arrival, and mainly because it affects the wor the worst, you know, the worst uh, situation. And that's what Congress realized. You don't want this falling on homeowners. For example, take my mother, uh, or my father actually. Uh, he bought the house we grew up in in 1957 for sixteen thousand. He died uh, years ago. And after he died in the uh, in 2000, early in 2000, my mother sold that that sixteen thousand dollar house for five hundred thousand dollars. Do you think it was actually worth that much more? That's just what sixteen thousand was worth, you know, fifty years later. Right. You know, a lot of that is due to inflation. You can't tax that kind of thing. You know, they say they'll have an exemption, but what if one spouse? You know, who? How do you allocate it? The abuse. I, I think it's just. Well, and the, just, and, like and the whole said, thing on well, the the whole thing on the step up in basis, which I think is, will kill it for sure, I hope, is that you don't even have to sell the property before the taxes are well, due. that's crazy. Right? Yeah. 
Right. Yeah, I, I saw that, too. That'll never make it. I think they're calling it like an exit tax. Like it, you owe the tax without even realizing a gain. Right. So you got That's a farmer insane. farmer that passes away that wants to pass the farm down to his children, and there's a huge gain on it, but they don't want to sell the farm. But they got to pay the tax anyway under this proposed bill. It's insane. This will never pass. You know, I don't know, but I think this is too much of a shock to the system. They're better off trimming around the edges, maybe raising the capital gain rates a little, and that's about it. But to to take away step up in basis, remember, you're hitting homeowners hard. Uh, You know, that's the the bedrock of America and small business owners. Uh, So this is what's happened over the last hundred years. Every time they got close, they realized, oh, this is hitting the absolute wrong people. They think they're going to get the big billionaires. Yeah, they'll get them, but it means nothing to them. Right. So so what's going on with the estate tax proposals right now? Well, uh, you know, I don't I didn't see it in there. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we thought they would take that 11 million and knock it down to 3 million, but that wasn't in the first proposal. Uh, there, there was no uh, adjustment down, but that could happen. I think that's more likely. I think that's, uh, first of all, personally, I think the, the $10 million amount, which is inflation adjusted each year, so now it's $11.7 million for 2021 or $23 million for a couple, I think that's about the right amount. I think that covers 99 points, like 9% of the people. And I think that's fair, and they should just leave it the heck alone. Every time they start tinkering with it, people get worried. They make uh, bad moves, like even now. They're talking about messing with the capital gain rates, and everybody's talking about selling everything off. Right. I've had uh, clients you know, telling me, I've, I've had clients asking me the same thing, and I've had clients going, well, I don't think Biden, I think Biden's going to eliminate the, the, this, this amount of money that we can transfer to the next generation. We, should we just sell everything now and give it all away now? I'm like, no, 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 no. Just hold on, right? Because you, you don't make changes based on proposals, right? You make changes right. based on what com- what comes in, and then you think through it very, very carefully and make the right decision. Because there's most of the things that are in the tax code, Ed, you've taught me and you've taught the other advisors that are part of your elite IRA advisor group. There are planning techniques that can be utilized to get around these things, not to avoid them, but ways that you can minimize the pain that uh, Congress inflicts. Well, one thing I can tell you, speaking about getting around it, all they did, uh, if any of this passes, all they're doing, once again, Congress shooting themselves in the foot, is incentivize all of us to work with our clients to do the better planning we should have been doing all along. It's going to skyrocket the value of Roth IRAs and life insurance, tax-free vehicles. Uh, so, you know, it's very easy to get around all of this stuff. And uh, Congress doesn't see it. But I, I think, uh, first of all, that's the opening salvo. It's not even in the early stages. It's like embryonic stages. We don't know what this is going to develop right. into. And maybe nothing at all. I just feel, uh, also, I feel not only that with a 50-50 Senate, anything outside of the uh, you know extreme is not going to pass. But also, every day that goes by, that they don't pass a tax bill, and I don't think it's happening for a while, uh, it's more likely that if they do anything, it's not going to be retroactive because too much time has gone past. We're too far into 2021 for anything enacted to be retroactive. If anything passes, it will probably be effective in 22, which means you still have this year to do some great planning with today's low tax rates that are known. We know what the tax rates are today, and they may be the lowest you'll ever see in your lifetime. This is the opportunity to start taking down that IRA, getting rid of that debt. Use it for Roth IRAs or for life insurance. Uh, Matter of fact, I have a whole chapter in here on life insurance. I call it the power of life insurance. And I don't even sell, as you know, life insurance. But I think it's going to be a fantastic, it already is a great planning vehicle. I use it myself for tax planning. And now it's going to be more valuable. When there's a, there's no question, whenever there's a rate increase, a tax rate increase, anything tax free becomes immediately more valuable. Starting your route to retirement.